So uh, I didn't put any extensive samples of the fonts I'm going to talk about uh, on this display because I wasn't really expecting to have such a very nice display. Uh, so I've, I did load a page of just about each font I'm going to talk about together with appropriate math and uh, whatever. That's the URL and uh, do it now or do it later. So, okay, sorry about that. Um, I should explain first um, my prejudices about fonts. I'm very much uh, drawn to old style fonts rather than some of the newer ones, which means things like Bembo, Garamond. <laughs> and others for, uh, that are derived from them. Uh, I also care very much about math fonts, and especially trying to get math fonts to match uh, the common ones. So the organization of the talk is going to be to look at what we have now. Uh, it's not all on Tech Live, uh, but it is mostly on C10. I want then to compare this with what we've had in the past, just to see, uh, get a, give an idea of what's new. This involves taking a fairly careful look at Bembo and Garamond, two fonts I really like. Then uh, the other Roman fonts that one can bring up. I also want to pay a little attention to typewriter fonts, which I tend to use a lot, and which have undergone some recent renovations, and then also bring up a couple of other issues about a fairly recent addition to the ways that we handle fonts that have multiple weights, and then take a look at some of, uh, some of the newer sans serif fonts. Okay, so to start at the, the open type level, this is pretty much a list of what can be used right now, not all out of the box, but if you want to go ZTech or Lula Tech and make use of open type fonts. So you do have then, just to read quickly down here, ways to get Times, Palatino, Libertine, Bembo, Charter, uh, Tug's version of Gentium, Garamond, uh, Utopia, and uh, Baskerville, which is sort of like Baskerville, and though it's not a free font, what I used to call Lucida, and I learned from Carl, is really Lucida. Well, not free, but it's a very good deal. The, one of the more interesting ones here is the, uh, the Garamond. The EB Garamond that was mentioned in the last talk is just a beautiful uh, rendition of old-time old real Garamond. It's not yet complete. It has only uh, regular weight, uh, upright shape and italic, but not yet bold. But it is just a terrific job, I think. <laughs> the other one on this list is a bit more mysterious. This was made several months ago by taking uh, the Garamond X package that I had made about three years ago, uh, putting that into open type format, and the plan was that this was going to shortly become public. I haven't seen any trace of it ever since, but I include it on this list still because it should be. The, the origin, like Garamond X, is the old 
URW Garmon number eight that was really lacking a number of features that uh, as people who care about typography uh, we, we should expect. For example, it had no small caps, it didn't even have a complete set of F ligatures, and it didn't really have any alternate figure styles. So those are things I added to get Garamond X. Uh, then they were put in uh, open type format. They should be there soon. The other one that's uh, fairly new is Heuristica. So this is an extension of Utopia, uh, the free part of Utopia, that is, just the four basic fonts that are now on now part of Tech Live. The main things added there are, well, there is uh, small caps, but only in upright Roman shape. That's, of course, the main thing you want. It has alternate figure styles, but it has a great extension in the direction of Cyrillic characters and other accented characters. So this was made by a, uh, a Russian physicist uh, whose name I'm not recalling right now. But the problem with that is, though it was distributed in open type and then with a, a LaTeX package, that the LaTeX package unfortunately didn't work, and it was basically because the open type was faulty. So all I did with that was fix the open type added the tables that really should have been there and fixed the existing tables so that then it could be handled with auto inst and produce a LaTeX package. So if you happen to like Utopia, that does pretty well. So I'll say a bit more about Basketball, which is a different package when I move on a little. So, each of the families I mentioned here uh, under open type also has a corresponding postscript version and with LaTeX support files. So I don't go through all of them there. I do mention, though, the ones that had different names. So that Yeah, as I mentioned, so Garamond X is the Garamond version I spoke about. X Charter does really the same thing with the Charter family, adds small caps, adds a number of figure styles, uh, adds, I don't think I had to add F ligatures in that case. But that's been, uh, my goal with each of these to add those features to each of the families in which they don't exist, make an open type version as well uh, to give people new things to look at and use. This, uh, this Bembo version, I had a hard time naming because Bembo, of course, is a copyrighted name by Adobe or monotype, I think. Uh, Cado was the version designed by a Latin instructor named David Perry, where he added mainly a great number of uh, letters that were useful in ancient languages. But he also had this very nice uh, Roman part where he did sort of a version of Bembo. So I took out all the old letters and I enhanced, I think, what you see in the, uh, the part that at least covers T1 encoding. Added small caps where they didn't exist. He had only small caps in upright Roman. And he had no bold italic at all, so I had to design a bold 
uh, Italic Music Thought Forge. That turned out to be a much bigger job than I thought, and doing just the transformation from Cardo to Bembo probably took about four months of full-time work. The other problem with this one is that the Roman shape had absolutely no, uh, no, no set of uh, metric adjustments. And so I had to do that, and that, that turned out to be just a huge job. I probably spent a total of about uh, 150 hours just doing that piece. Uh, and the same thing with the small caps, they all need the same sort of adjustments. Anyway, I'm, I'm happy with the result, and uh, I'd urge you to take a look at that next time you're feeling that you need to have something new to, to play with. So, the other families I mentioned at the bottom here are not really new, but they're ones I've been putting out for about four years. These were based on TX fonts, which is an old, about a 15-year-old package, and PX fonts. These are versions of Times and Palatino that have a corresponding math, but they were not really usable because the, uh, the metrics were so poorly done that they just looked terrible in the final output. So just a, a brief word about what seems to be coming out now. I mean, the fonts that were traditional in tech were the traditional printer fonts. They looked wonderful in print. That was the design point. Many of the newer fonts we see now are called web fonts, meaning they're designed to look good on the page much lower resolution, and that requires different sorts of standards. As this says, you have simpler shapes, you space them wider. The counters, that is the spaces that are enclosed or partially enclosed by the font outline, have also to be larger because at lower resolution, those pieces get squeezed down and can become unusably small. I've also found that that may be uh, an overused term because when I've looked at some things that go to some pains to say that they're web fonts, uh, they look no different to me than ordinary fonts. So I think people think it's a selling point or they're not really selling, they're giving them away, but they want to have their fonts adopted. So this is looking back 10 years at the corresponding story. So of course we've had for quite a while all the fine basic URW fonts. I think they were initially donated to uh, GhostScript and then went over to Tech and that gave us the basic uh, PostScript 35 fonts then URW's Garamond number 8. And as well, there was, uh, let's see, Utopia and Charter. They were, as I mentioned earlier, just in the, a very basic shape. And I think it wasn't until around 2005 or so that the uh, license for Utopia became clear enough, thanks to the efforts of Carl, I believe, that anyone could really uh, use them freely. And it's surprising how long it took for people to actually use them freely after that. What we had in addition was some special packages, MathPaso, MathPTMX, Fourier, that actually put these into uh, a package that had math fonts with it. And you had the math design 
versions of Garamond, Charter, and Utopia. And in both that case and the case of Fourier, these would make use of the commercial expert fonts that went with them, uh, these things if you had them. But of course, I think few people did that. I think also in 2004 we had early versions of Latin Martin. I'm not quite sure when that was finished, but I know that Will Robertson wrote a, an article in Tugboat in 2006 in which he explored this package. So I think it must have been fairly complete by then. This is going back uh, nearly f uh, more than 500 years. Well, the correct measurement there is actually 483 years before tech. <laughs> so this is uh, a little fragment from the book The Etna by Pietro Bembo. I suspect it's not a very good photocopy. It looks more like it's from a camera. The top is somewhat curved. But there are features in this that uh, once you forget about the long S and certain other ligatures, that beautiful CT ligature, that we still see in modern renditions. And uh, if you can keep a picture of this in your mind, you'll see in a few minutes just where. Oops. This is another, uh, another little fragment of an extremely important document, the Egenolf Berner fragment, that shows what Garamont's original, uh, what's believed to be Garamont's original latest version of his font uh, collection was. This is the one that most modern versions of Garamond are now using as the basis. Uh, it turned out that many of the fonts produced under the name Garamond, and especially the first half of the 20th century, were really working off fonts by Janon who came 50 years after Garamond, and uh, which were really of somewhat different shapes. So now all the, the new renditions are going back to this. So this is a list of the ones that I know derived from Garamond, that is from the EB fragment. And the most uh, interesting of these is the E.B. Garamond that is, you know, the free version that's now the one finished on C10. But if you look at the all of these, they, they certainly are very similar. Whoops. Okay, so these are the ones that try to mimic the font that was in De Etna that I asked you to keep in mind. So there are a number. The top one, Monotype Bembo, was a metal font, and it was one of the most widely used fonts in book publishing <coughs> in the first half of the 20th century, and quite possibly longer, just because it was considered such a, uh, a readable good-looking font. From then, the rest of these are digital. And it's just been the case that nobody's really liked the digital versions very much. They think they're too spindly, they don't have the character of the original monotype Bembo. Some people say that uh, the problem is they didn't take the ink spread that's part of the normal printing process into account when they digitized. So, these are just some lines to see 
how Bembo, or the modern rendition of Bembo, and the modern rendition of Garamond correspond. Garamond certainly based his original fonts on Bembo, and you can see how close they really are. Though there are some features I should point out, Bembo has very tall ascenders. But they're taller, and the font looks spikier. It has projections that aren't present in Garamond. Garamond looks like it's been sanded off by an excellent woodworker. Those little projections are gone. Also, the, the tall ascenders are now longer as tall, and that big fat F shape you see in Bembo has now been shortened a great deal. It's no longer big and overarching. Uh, I like that big F, though it, it's a great problem in trying to do kerning tables. <laughs> uh. So this is just a a quick display of how these versions of Bembo look in comparison to one another. Cardo, the one based on Cardo, that's FBB or Free Bembo, is just modestly darker, I think. I like the way it looks in print, but it's not really darker. Uh, None of them, I think, really stands up to the old metal one, but they don't look bad. Unfortunately, one of the best looking in this collection is Yale's Bembo. This is not publicly available. It was one that uh, came about because Yale owns a copy of, a, prist a pristine copy of De Aetna from its rare book library. At the same time, about 15 years ago, they actually had Matthew Carter teaching in their art school, a typography course. So they commissioned him to do a special version of Bembo. This is it. Unfortunately, not public, but even if it were, it wouldn't be very good because it lacks many of the things that we've come to expect in good font collections. So this is a little comparison of the different versions of Garamond, the all based on the uh, Egenhoff Berner. So the Adobe is one of, I think, one of Adobe's most uh, worked renditions of anything. One of the problems is when you try to use AutoInst on this, it's so big that it breaks the 64K limit on TFNs. And so you lose information. And you're not, or I couldn't figure out, which information is actually being lost. So that's a real problem for using that in LaTeX. Uh, I won't go into much on Palatino because that's well known, except that there are now very good versions available no matter what you want to use here. Likewise with Times, the big news I guess now is that Styx is finally out in revised form and that has an unparalleled collection of math glyphs, and though the text part is not up to other packages, in my opinion, uh, you can mix the math part easily with others. So, Baskerville. Uh, I have to go quickly here, so let me just say that there is one free rendition of this, of Baskerwald. Uh, it has a number of problems that had to be fixed. The ligatures were not terrific, and there are a lot of problems with the math part. 
that is, the symbols that are commonly used, like plus and equals, were just misaligned. So that's fixed, I think, in Basketball X. And to show the, to compare the available versions of Baskerville, so all but V are commercial, the one thing you see is that V is quite heavy, much heavier than the others, and lacks some of the beautiful shapes that you see in other Baskervilles, like uh, the, the lowercase a is just not, I think, very elegant, and the lowercase e the crossbar is too low. Utopia. This has some things I mentioned before. Not a font I'm real fond of. It's almost the opposite of the, the ones I like best. It has no flair. Uh, it tries to be plain. It really succeeds in that. <laughs> Libertine. This, the, this is a plain font but it looks very good, I think. And from my point of view, it's one of the most useful as a math add-on to other text families that don't have a, a natural connection. And that's probably because it has a very neutral appearance. So to illustrate this, I've shown this use with Charter, which has very little resemblance to Libertine. And I paired libertine math with charter text. And it, I think it doesn't look so bad. I don't think I have time to go off into the typewriter fonts. Uh, so I'll just quickly say that there is now a package that ZLMTT that picks out the true t the uh, typewriter fonts from Latin modern uh, and gets every one of the features. That it has a very extensive list of features. I should also not forget to mention uh, the extension of Inconsolata. Uh, Cal had a package a few years ago that did the earlier version. I took the fonts and added a few uh, character choices to get the newer version. And the other popular package, the uh, Barra Mono, has recently been extended to the Deja, Deja Vu Sans. And that just has more characters, more encodings, and so on. So I think that's probably a good place to, to finish. The rest of this is not so important. Questions, comments? Oh. As a user of many of these fonts, and I just want to say my deep thank you for the work you are doing. It's absolutely great. Oh, thank you. <laughs>
Uh, I haven't turned to that yet, <laughs> but uh, I mean, any comments are very welcome because I've had almost no feedback on this. And my second question has to do with um, the monotype uh, fonts, which I'm very interested in. And there's, uh, I think it's Menlo is the free version of Meslo, or Meslo is the free version of Menlo. Has that been looked at, or is that in the pipeline for consideration? Uh, not my pipeline, but okay. I'm, once again, I'm, <laughs> okay. uh, we'll, we'll I'm very open one. to ideas. Question in the back. Yeah. I'm just wondering what Miriam is not covered. Like, uh, Sorry, could you repeat that? No, we have this collection of fonts here. Yes. But what the area is not covered. For example, 1B to encounter numerous fonts in a universe and cookie girls. So those are the font font characters? No, I'm saying the, the, the area covered here is in the list the yeah. Okay. So what's the area not covered? Oh, so, so what most of these that I covered were serifed and a couple of typewriter. Uh, the sans serif, which has these uh, you know, humanist and, and other things, grotesque, I've, I've had very little to do with. In my opinion, it's much harder to make those work as good tech body fonts. Uh, but once again, I'm open to any new project, so maybe we could talk about that afterwards. There's still a couple of minutes if anyone has any further questions. Um, I just have a, a comment, not directly related to Michael's excellent work, but uh, there's a URL, and I'm not going to say what it is, but if you go to talk.org.fonts, it'll be prominent. The Law Tech Font Catalog, which is uh, done in Denmark, is the best resource I've ever seen for seeing what's available with tech. You know, there's actual, you know, it's, it's nicely divided. You can look at it in various ways, and there's samples. And that low is reasonably fast. Is that a dot font or slash fonts? Slash fonts. And the LaTeX font catalog will be one of the URL Thank you. Thank you so much.